Hey, Construction Legends. So today we're going to talk about the vicious cycle of tendering a bidding on construction projects and how to avoid it, right? We've got a nice little tip at the end that I can share with you what the big construction companies to do specifically and how they win more tenders and bids. And so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Kian Brennan. I am the CEO of a company called Quantum Contract Solutions. Two things to do. One is if you want to learn free training, whatever you need to do, go to constructionsecrets.io. And if you're a big old company and you're bigger than 5 million in, in annual revenue and you want us to help you with your construction contract, contract management, go to quantumcontractsolutions.com. Let's get into it. Okay, so what is the vicious cycle of construction uh, tendering? Or how do you get yourself into the, a vicious cycle? So there's two concepts, really, I want you guys to understand. One is the, the there's a vicious cycle, and the other one is there's a um, victorious or virtuous cycle, whichever way you want to, to look at. And so firstly, let's look at the vicious cycle in construction and how that can impact you. So imagine you're, you're bidding for work and you're in this competitive tendering scenario and you are bidding lower and lower and lower. In fact, um, you know, I, I, I remember being um, involved in this uh, reverse auction tender. Um, I was working in the Middle East. I was working for Maersk Oil at the time in Qatar. And they had this brand new system. So Mer Maersk Oil at the time were, you know, like really, really on top of their game when it came to shipping and all of this stuff that they're well known for. The Maersk Oil is another part of their business. I actually think it's been bought over by, by Total. Uh, the French oil and gas company, but they the the shipping company was so dialed in that they had all of these you know comp like competitive tendering platforms and uh, auctions and anyway. So long story short, what it, what it is is it was you were you were asked to if you wanted to be part of a bid or a tender, and so um, you submitted your technical qualifications and uh, your technical bid, and if you were considered technically qualified you would be invited to log into this system at 10 a.m on a tuesday morning and then submit your price and then so you submit your price and then everyone submits their price and up on the screen they see just dots they don't see prices on our side we see the dots and the prices and then they have a minute or two minutes or, or i can't remember exactly how much time to, to submit another price and then they, then it'll be reset and then everyone will be given another minute to submit another price until someone decides not to submit a price. So it's like a, a reverse auction, essentially. So down and down and down. And I swear, this thing, you could have you could have sat in a, in a room, I think it was 10 a.m. in the Middle East, right, where people don't necessarily drink that much as well. And you could have had a few beers and it'd be a great time, right? It was the reverse of, of watching a horse race. It was insane. And so you're sitting there and it's going down. You're like, oh my God, that guy's gone down. Oh, he's dropped down. Oh, he's come out of nowhere. I don't believe it. While it was really fun for us, on the other side, I remember talking to the company when they came in to, you know, uh, in our kickoff meeting, they said, we're completely making a loss on this, like, you know, et cetera. We kind of got carried away, et cetera, et cetera. And it was shocking, really bad for business. I don't agree with this at all. Yes, it was very exciting, but if something is very exciting or if you're getting carried away in a real auction, you, you know, you're getting excited about it, that's how mistakes happen. And obviously, these guys made a mistake as well. While interesting, I think it's very, really bad thing to do. And so they were actually caught themselves in into that vicious cycle of tendering in that now they're in a situation that they've bid it so low, they're making no margin or basically you're going to break even or make a tiny, tiny profit. And so how does that play out over time? Okay, so maybe they go into this project and they've got to cut corners. There's no way around it. They've got to cut corners. They've got to cut costs somewhere. So what's going to ultimately happen is they're going to get worse people. They can't afford good people. They're going to lose the good people. They can't afford good materials. They can't afford good equipment. And, and that's it, basically. And so what, what happens there is because of those things over time, the service goes downhill because obviously they're not putting the money into the service. So the, the service goes downhill. Their reputation goes downhill. They maybe go for another one and the same thing happens and happens and happens. And, and their reputation is getting worse and worse. And then because their margin is so tight and so tight, the prefer, their delivery uh, is going down and down and down until eventually they go out of business. So that is the vicious cycle of tendering.
Now, flip side, the virtuous cycle of tenery, and this is why, where possible, you you want to have a different acquisition channel other than just bidding and tendering for work, okay? Because options are everything. And what I mean by an acquisition channel is essentially a different, another way other than competitively bidding for work to win work, okay? So we're talking outbound, call, like calling calling people. We're talking referrals. We're talking repeated work uh, for uh, for the same client, relationships, social like getting work via social media via ads via brochures whatever there's loads of different ways to win work that is not bidding okay and so if you have more acquisition channels you obviously are in a position to actually charge more for your services you, um, and a lot of clients are willing to pay more money if your reputation of being able to deliver the work is very high so let's just look at the virtuous cycle the virtuous cycle is you win a project with a high margin right? You, it's like you're very healthy. Now, because you have that high margin, you're getting better people, you're getting the best people, you're getting the best equipment, you're getting the best materials. And what do you do? You deliver the best project for them. Your reputation goes up, okay? And you get more projects, you get more repeated work, you get referred work, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and it goes up and up and up and up. And then you get a great reputation. And then when people are looking at you specifically, they say, hey, they're, look, they cost more money, sure, but they get the work done. They're very, very good at what they do. And then when they actually get into a bit of a down cycle in, um, in the construction industry where things are not going well, people are more concerned about doing, you know, making sure that you can actually finish the work than cost. Because they're like, oh, well, if I get the cheapest guy, that's great. But if I can't actually finish the work, then I'm going to get myself into it. I'd rather pay a little bit more money but I know that these guys are going to do the job. And that's very, very important. So my suggestion to you is find some different acquisition channels, be able to charge more money. And if you if you win, if you don't win a tender, you know, obviously it's a bit it's a bit annoying if people are undercutting you, but you know, it's okay. Now the flip side of that is what the and what I promise what you could do is if you are a very contractually savvy construction company, at the start of the video, I promise I'll give you a bit of a tip. And so the biggest and best construction companies will win bids at a loss, but they'll know that they can make it up in the post award phase because they're so fantastic at they're getting change orders in, getting EOTs in, and that's how they do it. The big turners of the world, all those big companies, they, they have been contractually savvy from the beginning and they know how to do it. And if you can do that too, then you can kind of leverage everything and you can just be a very, very savvy, very, very good construction company. Now, what if you're watching this on, on a video somewhere rather than on the podcast, if you're watching it on a video, please drop a comment below and I promise that I'll answer every single comment. If you've got any questions, just drop them in. Or if you've got a, you know, you want to say something about the, the, the various different strategies I talked about, please do. I'd absolutely love to hear, you, hear from you, okay? Hey, Construction Legends, I hope you enjoyed that. If you want more of the same, please click here to have another cool video. And we've also got a full contract negotiation training course. It's six weeks, everything you need to do to negotiate your own contract. It's a playlist, click on it, go through all the training, and it'll make you way, way better and allow you to sign way less riskier contracts and set yourselves up for success. Okay, so choose one of them and go, for, go forth and conquer.